the modern enterprises has an incredible diversity of endpoints accessing data. Not all endpoints are managed or even owned by the organization, leading to different device configurations and software patch levels. This creates a massive attack surface area, hence zero trust. So in this video, we are going to talk about secure endpoint with zero trust. We all know zero trust adheres to the principle, never trust, always verify. In terms of endpoints, that means always verify all endpoints, which includes any device or application used to access work data. The health and trustworthiness of applications that run on those endpoints impact your security posture. We need visibility. We need to prevent corporate data from leaking to untrusted or unknown apps or services, either accidentally or through malicious intent. In a zero trust approach, the same security policies are applied regardless of whether the device is corporate owned or personal owned or through bring your own device, personal owned, right? So, we are going to explore how we can secure endpoint here. Here, in the introduction, we give the entire gist of this video. Never trust, always verify. How can we do that for the devices that we don't own, for the devices that people are accessing work data from anywhere in the world? Well, by knowing the device information. Remember the very first video of the zero trust? If we cannot, make uh, or get everything inside the physical boundary, then we need to get the security outside where the data is. So now data is on the endpoint. So we want to know the endpoint. So just like securing identity with some initial objectives, here we do have some initial objectives and then some additional objectives to secure our endpoints. So, how can we know about the endpoints? Corporate endpoints, personal endpoints, we should know about them. So in order to monitor security and risk across multiple endpoints used by any person or one person, we need visibility in all devices and access points that may be accessing work data or resources. Hence, register endpoints with Azure AD. This will help us to get the visibility. We need to set the compliance rules to ensure the devices meet minimum security requirements before access is granted. That's the reason we want to know what's going on in the devices. Also, set remediation rules for non-compliant devices so that people know how to resolve the issue. For example, you are accessing your work data from your phone and there is a policy you should change your password in three months else your device would be non-compliant you will get the remediation step change your password minimum six digit or something right now once we have the access and things are compliant devices are okay to access work data we need to control what the user can do with the data after they have access for instance restrict to file saving to untrusted locations such as local disk or restrict copy and paste paste sharing with, with a consumer communication app or chat app or protect data or anything that we are not okay with, we can apply those rules for DLP policies, data loss prevention policies and stop people to copy, paste or share the data. All right, well, these are some initial objectives. Let's quickly check how can we match these objectives. Well, story is pretty clear as we have already talked about. What we need to do, we need to register the endpoints, right? We need to register the uh, corporate devices. We need to register the personal devices. And if needed, we can also enable the Windows Hello passwordless as in replace or different or other way of signing in. And after a device is registered, user can access your organization's uh, 
restricted resources using their corporate username and password to sign in or Windows Hello for business. That's the way going ahead for the zero trust uh, for endpoints. Let's quickly check some screenshots how we can register the devices, existing corporate devices or maybe personal devices also. So here, as you can see, if you have Windows 10, you can go to uh, access work or school, click on connect, add your email address and join for the corporate devices. In case of out of box corporate devices, we need to sign in with the work or school email address on the Microsoft sign-in screen and this will do the trick. Or uh, if it is your personal, then you can just type in email address and follow the process. And in next slide, let's enable and configure Windows Hello for Business to allow user an alternative sign-in method that replaces a password such as PIN, uh, biometric authentication, or fingerprint reader to enable Windows Hello for Business on users' Windows 10 devices. Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center will help us to complete these actions as shown in the screenshot. Uh, Windows Hello for Business, we can enable it, we can define the pin length and we can have pin recovery and other options like biometric authentication enable, anti-spoofing enable, things like that. We can select those uh, options and apply. Now, so, as of now, we have registered the devices to manage and also enable the Windows Hello as an alternative sign-in method. Now it's time to apply the policies which will help us to decide, allow or deny as per the compliance status and also give notification for the remediation. So these are the steps we need to follow to achieve this second initiative in our Zero Trust deployment. Let's quickly check how we create compliance policy with Microsoft Intune for all devices. Now here you can see a very simple snippet uh, for Windows 10 compliance policy. We need to go to devices, compliance policies, as you can see at the top right here, devices, compliance policies, and we need to create the policy. Select a platform for this policy. It's Windows 10 here, and then select the desired health configuration. Now you see right here, this is the uh, health device health configuration where we are looking for bit locker required, secure boot required, code integrity required. Uh, there are like multiple settings around here that we need to select. The next one is the device properties where we can have minimum and maximum OS version, right? And uh, if we go ahead and check uh, another slide, I have one more snippet here. We, we configure the system security uh, settings where we have, uh, options like uh, password to unlock a mobile device. Yes, we can opt for this firewall, TPM, antivirus, anti-spyware. There are like so many settings that we can opt for as per our need and the requirement. And uh, <clears throat> let's check uh, actions, uh, uh, windows in this wizard. Actions like what, what we need to do those things we, these are the settings that we need to apply. Now let's see the actions. Now under here, actions for non-compliance. Now here we can also put some, some uh, remediation steps here, as you can see, and also the notification for the people who whose devices are not compliant. On the actions for non-compliance tab, specify a sequence of actions to apply automatically to devices that do not meet these compliance policies. For example, initiate the uh, initiate the Windows updates. When their endpoints or apps become non-compliant, this will help us to guide through self-remediation. Alerts are automatically generated with additional alarms and automated actions set for certain threshold. You can set non-compliance remediation uh, actions as well. Now, once we have registered this, we have the policy to find out whether devices are good to go or not. Now, for the compliant devices, they have the access to the work data. Now we need to protect data loss prevention with the help of data loss prevention policies. So once, once the data access is granted, we want to control what the user can do with the data. 
For example, if a user access a document with a corporate identity, you want to prevent the document from being saved in an unprotected consumer storage location or being shared with a con consumer communication or chat app. For example, I have my official uh, Outlook going on in my uh, personal device, which is managed by the Microsoft Intune. If I try to share any document from Microsoft Outlook to WhatsApp, it won't allow me. Just an example. All right, so what can we do then? Well, there we go. Use Intune security, Intune security baseline to help you secure and protect your users and devices. We need to go to Endpoint Security, Security Baseline to view the list of available baseline under MS Intune, Microsoft Intune. Select the baseline you would like to use and then create profile as shown. And we have so many settings here. Now here you can see block user control over installation. Yes, block MSI, yes. So we can control that. And there are other settings. I have got this snippet here. You can go through these settings, like option to pause the Windows update. Yes, enable restart checks, allow, or uh, Microsoft product updates, yes. So once you are done with these settings, we can assign this to uh, groups. Under assignment, choose select groups to include or exclude. Well, these are the three initiatives that we had at the uh, uh, very first slide. And by following these options, we can have, we can achieve this initiative we, uh, by registering, uh, applying policies to find out compliant, non-compliant, and of course, protecting the data that people are accessing. Now, there are some additional initiatives as well, which, were, which is also provided by Microsoft so that we can have uh, zero trust for the endpoints. What are those additional objectives? Well, endpoint threat detection is used to monitor device risk. Okay, well, once we have accomplished our first three objectives, the next step is to configure endpoint security so that advanced protection is provisioned activated and monitored. A single pane of glass is used to consistently manage all endpoints together. We can have this by routing uh, all the endpoint logs and transactions to the same solution. And integrate data from Microsoft Defender for endpoint or other mobile threat defense vendors as an information source for device compliance policies and device conditional access rules. The device risk will then directly influence what resources will be accessible by the user of the device. So in a nutshell, if we need to summarize how we need to protect endpoint with zero trust, well, remember the principles of the zero trust, Always uh, verify explicitly. That was the principle, right? We don't trust by default. We need to verify it explicitly. Now, people are using their uh, Windows or phones from anywhere in the world. So how can we trust them? The only way we can trust them when we know what is going on there. So we need to register them. We need to check for the compliance. We will define the compliance policy. And once they have the access, we will apply the data loss protection policy. So they have uh they they there would not be any data loss or any mess up when people are using personal devices to access the corporate data then once the initial uh, objectives are done we can have advanced protection in place and have all the logs and transactions pull in the same solution and utilize it for the further uh, security with this i'm going to end this video and let's meet in another video and try to secure one more element with the zero trust. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.